Welcome to Numb Bills Fan Podcast, episode number 241. I'm your host for this one, and usually, David Palermo. So, a lot of things to announce here. Number one, Numb Bills Fan is now brought to you by EQ Network, which is a network that will hub other podcasts, such as a upcoming Steelers podcast, another podcast called Footballed, which will actually be a feed of different football things. So pretty stoked on it. Okay. So what we're getting at is um, tune in. Keep tuning in. There's been a lot of work in the background. It's COVID season and uh, it's episode 241 for Numb Bills fan. If you've been paying attention, it's been kind of low. I'll be honest, there's a lot of brands right now that are killing it. And I'm getting my info elsewhere. Um, the Buffalo Beat Podcast, if I had a one-stop shop for now, is the spot I go. Um, as you know, I've interviewed uh, Ryan Talbot in the past. Um, and he's a great up-to-par beat writer. Like, just every little nook and cranny of info. And he's at uh, New York Upstate. And he's a good dude. Really on it. And on this episode... We have another guy coming on named Matt Fairburn. Well, what Matt Fairburn has to do with Ryan Talbot is they used to work together. So that's cool. They used to be colleagues. And then Matt went from uh, Syracuse.com or New York Upstate, whatever you want to call it, and ended up going to, I believe, The Athletic. And here he is doing a podcast with Joe Buscalia and writes for The Athletic. And the great Tim Graham is over there. Um, and uh, Tim Graham's a good dude too. He, I have been hopping in his DMs, and um, you know, if anybody's up on it, don't forget to uh, check out the Buffalo Beat podcast, please. Um, this interview coming up, it was actually done a couple weeks ago. This coming Monday, when you're listening to it, will be two weeks ago. Uh, this is before Sean McDermott extended his contract, and this podcast, I want to be a timeless podcast, pretty much. And what it is is. I've slowed down on this journey with this Bills thing here, project, and it's not that I'm not passionate. It's just I'm not passionate about it. Um, I can't swing the hammer of quote unquote truth and uh, work hard and you know learning how to quote really market this podcast. I thought organically on Instagram, as you know, Twitter, as you know, if you hit the hashtag Numb Bills fan, it's everywhere. Um, you know. And it's been a great journey, honestly. Um, I never thought that Eric Turner or anybody would be able to get my dumb ass to the sidelines to actually ask questions at a presser. And this whole podcast has been about getting to the bottom of shit, really. And my heart's been broken. And I've had to go from this Bambi-eyed fan pretty much over a decade to now I'm pretty cynical. I don't buy a lot of shit. And it was nice to have Matt Fairburn come on, and, and he's eight years younger than me, but he's covered the Bills during the Rex era, and he's covered the Bills during the McDermott era. And, you know, I loved when Rex Ryan came to town. I was like, oh, sweet. The clown show's on. I'm fucking the clown. Let's go. I'm hopping right on here. I can't wait. And then we get Sean McDermott, and now I'm just, like, out of steam. You know, it just doesn't. The marketing team at One Bills Drive does a fantastic job. Um, you know, so I don't know. I have fun with this Bills thing, but if I'm going down my old list here, it was like me and Deacon, if you remember Deacon, 20 tweets, 5 Reddit posts a week, 10 Instagram posts a week, 2 graphics a week, 2 podcasts a week. That's a lot of Bills shit. And now that there's so many brands, it's almost like, you know what? I'm going to actually peel back and let people who are really passionate talk about this Bills shit. And that's going to be guys that you've heard before. Mike Smith, Fantasy Smitty. Love Mike Smith. Mike is also going to be on the football podcast that's going to be dropping, which is going to be a football feed. Love Mike Smith. You know who else I love? Kevin Masseri, one of the best people ever. Done work in his house personally. He's a good dude, good friend of mine. And uh, I can't wait to have him join the feed of Numb Bills fan as well and football. Okay, so Mike Smith will have you some Bills talk. Kevin Masseri will have you some Bills talk. An important announcement, somebody I respect highly, from the Rochester Sports Network, Icy Vic. Um, great dude. Always been friends with him through this Bills um, 
project here. I don't really keep in touch with them that much, but we've been linking up um, phone call wise, and we got some plans. He's got a show he wants to add either to the feed or his own thing um, that will be called Haters Ball, and pretty much he's going to be the moderator between two passionate sports fans, and they're going to go to bat and have a verbal war, I guess. Um, he'll have more details to come. But what I'm getting at is uh, a lot of things going on. This will all be on the football channel. This will all be on Numb Bills fan because Icy Vic is also a Bills fan, so he'll have some Bills thoughts too. And we're going to see a lot of people interjecting. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what I want. And what that means is you won't hear from me mostly on the Internet anymore. Um, I'm a fan of podcasts, number one, before I started the podcast. Number two, um, I like to support people and empower them. Um, it's what I do at work with a guy who works with me who's doing the Steelers podcast, Ryan Jones. Shout out, Ryan Jones. And uh, he'll be donating to the EQ feed as well. And um, long story, or the, the football feed, sorry. And long story short, what I'm going to be doing in the background is really just making sure that these guys and hosts have the tools. I'm going to be running the EQ network as well. Um, it's my network that I'm starting. I hate to say my, 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 me, but I am saying it not now, but I have a team around me that I rely on. Um, and I have some consultants. So I will give them a shout out. So probably come on soon. I don't know if they want to be revealed yet, but we have Rob Mantinucci doing art. We have Kim Vona from KSV Social. Um, she's awesome. She has been helping with that. So I can't thank her enough for helping build a website and doing extra graphics as well rob mantinucci nuchberger designs and instagram make sure you follow him he's been doing stuff for the podcast and really it's it's been a long road of trying to figure out what i want to do i don't really personally care to be up in every goddamn fucking transaction but what i do care to, to do is empower people who do care about that as far as talking about it so long story short Icy Vic, Kevin Masseri, Mike Smith, they will be on the feed, probably with mostly up-to-date build stuff. What I'm going to do, I want to interview Matt Fairburn. I want to pick his brain. That's what you're going to hear. Episode 241 right here with Matt Fairburn. I just want to let everybody know what's going on. Now, there's a GoFundMe. I'm very quiet. I'm a very prideful uh, Dago, as you'd say, okay? And I don't like to ask for help. But Bill's Mafia, I love you guys. I love the support. Um, to all the, the niche listeners especially here for the support over the years sometimes I feel like I'm talking to the fucking wall and uh, there's a lot of you out there and I just want to thank you so much and the journey here is going to be having fun on this podcast up to date um, I'm not going to be personally super social active, socially active on this um, I don't really enjoy comment sections I feel like they're wars and people are brutal even with their name and face to it and they got pictures of their kids but pretty much There'll be some Bills Mafia satire coming. So, look, I don't ask for much, and I just want to raise awareness to you guys. There's a GoFundMe link in the bio. I don't ask for much help, and I hate to say it like that 35 times, but there's a GoFundMe link in there for my wife. We have a situation that put our family on a 180, and essentially building this network, building a studio with parts by hand in the middle of this stuff, um... There's pretty much a chance, very good chance, my wife is leaving the country uh, late November. She's volunteered to leave, and we're trying to raise awareness to this case where, under duress, she waived her appeal to um, voluntarily leave. And that's a whole long story, but it's in the GoFundMe link. I can't really explain it now, but if you want to read the story, please check it out, donate. It's going to help towards lawyer fees to find another lawyer, continue paying the one we have. And whatever's left over is really going to go right into living expenses. Worst case, if she has to be overseas and I have to fill out the form to get her back. It's all a bunch of legal mumbo jumbo, but, uh, you know, I thought we were hiring somebody to fight. And, um, you know, lawyer seems nice, but, you know, I'm clearly a talker and I have to keep my mouth shut. So people are wondering why the brand of Numb Bills fan, as gross as that sounds, the brand, stupid as it fucking is, um, 
you know, it's been meant to be fun, satire, whatever. But when I'm working on real life with my wife in this situation the last three years here, um, it's been a battle with this. Um, we've been handcuffed. She's been, she's had DACA for a long time, if anybody knows what that is. And pretty much she has no record of getting into the country as a traffic child at two years old. And if you sat there and watched the court, you would just fucking put your head under a van tire, back and forth, back and forth. It could be a Patriots van tire, for all I give a fuck. And, um, honestly, I'm, I'm doing another podcast called Burnt Coffee, and it's going to be going up against the system, and it's going to be diving into what's really going on, you know? And what this has to do with her, um, it's just another systematic fucking laziness thing that the regular American people, us, had to pay for. And apparently terms like hardship, and there, there's a lot of holes to jump through. The story is up, again, through the link on GoFundMe. Please check it out. And, um, you know, as always, follow along. Numb Bills fan everywhere. Follow Matt Fairburn. He writes to The Athletic. I can't say enough. I'm not a big-time reader. I'm always listening to podcasts. But if there's one podcast you listen to, please listen to Matt Fairburn's podcast, The Buffalo Beat. With Joe Vescalia. I was listening to Joe B as when he was a producer on WGR. And as you know, I'm kicking around the scaffold, blasting that shit through the radio. Um, so back in the day, and uh, it's just cool to just, these people are willing to take their time out of their busy day. Again, I've had this in the hopper for two weeks here. Um, so, Matt, if you're listening, thank you again for doing it. I really appreciate everybody's patience. Just now that you know a little backstory, I'm very private about it. You know, real life has been the motherfucker, okay? And that's to deal with it. I have to deal with it. And that's what I'm doing. I'm grinding. And honestly, it's been hard coming off our air. And now with this weird COVID times, I'm arguing with people because I read information that they don't like. So that's why we got this Burnt Coffee podcast coming. We're not going to interview people who are experts and other podcasters who have interviewed a multiple, a multitude of experts. Because thanks to you guys supporting them, Bill Spain, over the years. You know, I know we can do something real and make some damage and at least expose how this world works. So tune in to Burnt Coffee. That's coming soon on the eq Media Network. Uh, but again, here's Matt Fairburn for podcast Numb Bills Fan 241. All right. So on the line, as I promised, we have Matthew Fairburn. And uh, Matt, would you say you're from The Athletic? Is that how you would say it? Yeah, I would say. I work there. Uh, I, that is my my place of employment and the uh, the place that uh, that hosts my work. Okay, yeah, and, and and let me tell you guys something. As fans know, I'm not much of a reader, probably because uh, apparently at 36, I reverse engineer my life of where my teachings came from, and I've been stressed out my whole life, and I just literally just go run and work, and go run and work, and put on audio, 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 listen to music. Put these bands that have been marketed to me on a pedestal. Zeppelin two probably played a thousand million times in a day. Um, and for years. And long story short, The Athletic, I don't like reading, but they had the free trial subscription thing, I think for 90 days, and they recharged me again, real money. And I am fine with it because I am still in the middle of Tim Graham's awesome article about Pagula Sports and Entertainment and about the culture there and if you've been listening to the podcast i've lost a lot of motivation doing the podcast matt because and i'm gonna spit it back to you because of the marketing because of the frankly the bullshit spewed at me to buy in buy in buy in buy in when i'm sold to buy into all these players and then i see the system set up around them and our biggest example on the podcast i would call doug marone doug moron but come to find out rex ryan was probably the biggest moron even though um, you know, when he came into town, I'm like, I'm, I'm activated, dude. I'm ready to go. Clown show is on. Um, you know, we're just going to roll tape and I'm just going to make some skits and draw attention to this crap and have some deep philosophical, you know, joking talk. So what I want to know from you, the athletic, is it nice to write about things in a little bit longer of a form or it's not just clickbaity. You can actually kind of go around um, different avenues. Yeah, that's probably my favorite part, to be honest with you, is it kind of, you know, working, uh, I worked at Syracuse.com for 
I think it was four years before I got hired at the athletic four seasons, something like that, maybe three. Um, and that was a great place to, to work as well. But anybody who, who followed me there knows it was kind of like what you're talking about a lot more quick hitting, um, you know, kind of grabbing every headline and, you know, chasing clicks at times and things like that. But this has kind of trained my brain to, to, go back to writing about, you know, stuff more in depth or, you know, stuff that the way I think about it, every, every time I wake up to kind of put ideas down and and think about what I'm going to do next is, you know, giving people something they can't get everywhere else. That's not just the headline of the day or the news of the day, but, uh, you know, a, a a story, uh, that, that they haven't heard before or, um, you know, an interview with a person that, that they haven't heard from in a while. And, you know, you talk about Tim's story on on the Pagoulas is a great example uh, of something like that, you know, and, um, you know, I I think that makes the job more fun. Uh, Not that the news of the day and stuff like that, you know, chasing news isn't fun too, but, um, you know, being able to do stuff in depth and, and kind of peel back the curtain for people a little bit, I I think, you know, that's what motivates me. That's what, what makes the job fun. The reason I wanted to have you on, Tim, or Tim, holy shit! I'm sorry. <laughs> Got Tim on the brain. Wow, right. wow! <laughs> I, I've been called worse. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you. Um, the reason I wanted to have you on is for the nuts and bolts. You know, you're you're right in the fire, and um, you know, Ryan Talbot. Who's better than Ryan Talbot? Let's be real here. Nicest person ever. And he was at. He's wasn't he at Syracuse.com or is that New York Upstate or is it the same thing? Yeah, it's it's basically the same. That's thing. what I thought. Yeah. Okay, so and, yeah, he he and I worked together there. Now I had him on probably about a year ago. I was in this negative spew, and he was actually maybe March, and he was actually like stoked. And I'm like, not. I I thought Doug Whaley was the man. Again, I don't have your lens, so I thought Doug Whaley was like the cra- like the, like the bee's knees, as in like. Dude off street in Pro Bowl. Yeah, Rob Ryan sucks as a linebackers coach. No, he doesn't. I don't think I what do I know? I don't know anything. Again, I'm listening to John Murphy show and whatever audio I can take in. And then I'm researching to the sources I can find afterwards. But I'm giving the players a glass half full treatment. You know what I mean? Because I had to believe in the system, sort of, but I had to believe, you know what I mean? So I'm getting at is the nuts and bolts of all this stuff is I think what really the athletic and you guys get to go under because, man, Talbot is one of the hardest working dudes ever. And yeah, he sure is. It, 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 you know what I love about that dude? I can send him a taxi, gets back to me, and then I have other friends who think they're like, you know, socialites on the internet, and uh, they don't get back to you for like ever. And it could be just be me. Okay, let me make that clear. <laughs> it could be me, but Talbot. When I when this whole thing was developing, dude, I'm I'm watching all the sports writing and I'm like, th- these people aren't a part of business where they haven't been a part. I- I've always come up with construction, um, the streets of Lyle Avenue, as in a collision shot, watching pretty much, you know, street things go down. Like, you learn the neighborhood, you learn your your neighbors and and what geekers are and how to buy things low, sell high. That's what they do. You know, and you, you take care of the old lady up the street. There's a lot of a lot of stuff, okay? And I feel that when people started getting into this DIY blogging game, they think that more is better. And what you're really doing is more is honestly just um, grinding. And then you have to constantly be on it. Whereas when you're Ryan Talbot and you're super systemized and you're professional... He's got a good system, but for me, my style, I can't do that. I would absolutely go nuts. Yeah, it's, it's you know, I don't know that there's too many people that, that do it better than Ryan does in terms of being on top of everything and being able to consistently churn out, um, you know, content at the volume he does. And you're right, it's not for everybody, and it's easy to get burnt out doing it that way. Um, and, you know, I... I I don't. I haven't met too many people who've been able to to sustain it the the way that Ryan does, and he's got a real passion for it and a real knack for it, which I think uh, certainly helps as well. And uh, I think 
the way we do things at the athletic is not necessarily less of a grind, but it's a, a different grind. You know, you're spending a, a week reporting out a story uh, that, you know, is going to take you a long time to write and a long time to report and, and research and all that. Um, and so the, the end product is one post or one story, whatever you want to call it. But, um, you know, a lot, a lot of work goes into it behind the scenes, but yeah, definitely keeping up with, um, that, I, I mean, you've seen it, uh, there's been, a, a, there's a lot of Bill's blogs and, you know, they, they come and go and, and different writers come and go. Uh, I feel like Ryan has been, um, you know, there's a reason he, he rose up uh, and ended up at Syracuse.com, New York upstate is because he was able, you know, he's able to, to sustain that, that drive and that grind that, that is not easy to do, uh, especially when you're doing it for peanuts at first. Right. So, um, no, you know, definitely I, I got a ton of respect for that guy. Yeah. And the thing is too, is, um, we don't realize that, um, when we're doing this stuff that, I didn't realize this. That I, I knew there could be a grip of control, Matt. And we were talking. I got eight years on you. Um, like we were talking before, when I found out that YouTube was seven dollars per per thousand views, I'm like, this is a control grid. YouTube will, when the idiots find out how to buy into YouTube, which they did, and 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 now they have censorship, and I have my instagram and i'm sorry man i'm a one-man army but i will put that bill's media department to shame with my fucking cell phone dude like i'm i'll, I'll do respect that they're listening but Derek boy a fucking idiot if he didn't hire me like a hundred grand a year boy you're hearing it right now run it from my cell phone i'll even go buy two more and that guy's a good dude to me at least i don't know how he is to you guys but my first time at camp or you know again Got to understand my perspective, man. We talk pre roll, but to the fans, the three people listening, <laughs> um, <laughs> to the idiots, I don't know what the hell you're doing with your life listening to this shit. Um, excuse me, but you know, it was a big deal to be a fan of sports and um, always, always a fan. Like Michael Jordan was my hero, of course, he's everybody's, but my favorite baseball player of all time is Cal Ripken Jr., and it's all about, you know, what they tell you then when i really mean it by what they tell you which is you got to work hard you got to grind you got to be the best and sometimes that can be a curse and a lot of these guys are caught up in grind 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 but they have never come up with a monetization plan i i mine has always been to monetize to obviously survive but you don't have to be gross about it money comes with it if you run a shirt you know it's like bill burr i believe was had an example and it was long, long story short on it, it was, would you rather work for the record company where you're make, where you're selling millions of records and you have that prestige or would you rather work for yourself? You're selling 12,000 and you're living and you're eating well and, and you don't got to be, you know, and I think when these bloggers and things get in mind, they don't realize that they are still in a control grid. And that's why I bring it back to construction. That's why I bring it back to street because there's eventually a cap. So, what you have to do tastefully is somehow constantly be up on the algorithms. It, it's almost impossible. So all that means is that the NFL and the Buffalo Bills themselves and bigger media companies have the power to suffocate. So when they allowed my dumb ass on the sidelines coming from a drywall job, you know, get home, shower up, I'm like, holy shit, this is awesome. And I get to actually ask Marcel Darius a question about yoga and riding a bike. Like quite because what pisses me off, I watch these pressers, dude, and I'm like, ready to flip a table for about 10 years i'm like how do you not ask this how do you not like like seriously dude i would go work for a company for minimum wage just to give you guys shit to write about because there's so many things that people are not asking and i don't know about now but at least back in the day because now i i'm so burned out i'm just like the bills i had you to come on to actually get me up to speed but philosophically under the hood the Bills have a lot of press. The team itself has, I don't want to say billions, but they have millions of dollars to to push out some PR and stuff like that. And the players don't. And the players are in control as well. And the same way I'm in control and DIY bloggers are in control, we only have so much money to put into our press. 
We only have so much money. So if you're part of like the athletic, that actually seems like a dream job where this podcast is meant to be long form from driving around, talking to the guy who I would sub a lot of work for, this dude, Tom, good dude. And I would be like, Tom, I think this is going to happen. Well, he used to be the backup quarterback at McQuaid High School. His father was a coach. So you know he's a smart guy about it. So he pretty much taught me a lot of stuff, and I kind of picked up on it and applied the lens of are they building a team that is systematically in, in, in place, and are these players, like, honestly, Matt, and I want to spit it back to you, I feel like the athletic and podcasts are a great way to go when you want to talk about how, for example, Doug Marone did not watch the tape on C.J. Spelder when he came in. It took Chan Gailey three years to get that kid to learn how to play football. It was weird, like, to actually be productive in the NFL, not just hit the edge and just do what he did at Clemson. Does that make sense? And I feel like the athletic, you can do that. You can really long form it out there, and then you could give more tea leaves and other articles in the links to describe all that, too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's especially some of the the stuff that we've done in the last, you know, few months uh, without having sports. It kind of makes you get a little bit creative about about what you're doing and what what you're thinking about. And, you know, we've done a few stories um, looking back at, at some stuff like that, you know, um, looking back at Terrell Owens's time in Buffalo, which, of course, everybody knows Terrell Owens played for the Bills. Uh, everybody can look at his stats and look up the highlights from when he was here. Uh, but 10 years removed from it, the people that were involved in it might be a little bit more honest or have a little bit more perspective or, or have, you know, be less afraid of what they're saying. Um, because kind of some of what you're talking about, you know, a player that plays for the team right now is going to be less honest about that team now than he would 10 years from now. Uh, if I talk to, you know, Micah Hyde or who I, well, Micah Hyde's pretty honest. So maybe he's uh, not the best example, but you know, some of these guys that are afraid to, to say the wrong thing, or, you know, they just want to focus on playing, you know, 10 years from now, they might look back and, you know, have a, a different story to tell you. They might be willing to, to tell you something. I, I just wrote a story on, Marshawn Lynch, um, you know, called some of his old teammates about, you know, kind of their perspective and some of the stories from, from when he was here. And, you know, there are guys, you know, guys were so excited to talk about him and guys that, you know, some guys when they're current players get so exhausted by, by the media and rightfully so, right. We're, oh, we're yeah. you know, bugging them every day. And uh, like you said, some of the questions can get, you know, old and, and tired and repetitive, but, 10 years go by and nobody's asked them to do an interview. Uh, I talked to Bruce Hall for the Marshawn Lynch story I just wrote, and he was just a practice squad running back. Uh, you know, he probably hasn't had uh, done an interview in a long time. And he had some fun stories about Marshawn because he was in the, the position room with him. So, um, you know, I guess the that's a, a long way of saying that, you know, stuff like you're talking about with Marone and CJ Spiller or, um, you know, Marshawn Lynch's time here, Terrell Owens. I talked to Carlos Williams recently, like this time without football has, you know, given us the time and, and we have the, the platform at the athletic and the resources to, you know, the time to, to spread our wings and write these things where all of a sudden it's like, you know, there's not, we're not tied to the daily news because there, there hasn't been much and there ha hasn't been games or, or practices or, uh, things like that. You know, there was the free agency in the draft, but we had this time to go back and dive into some, you know, un uncovered things, you know, uh, you know, stuff that seems obvious maybe to, to people that were here and covered it in real time, but I wasn't, you know, I, I got here in 2014. So I'm like, man, T.O. was here. I wonder what that was like. And sure enough, there's some interesting things to say. T.O. had some interesting things to say. Same with Marshawn Lynch. So it's it's fun to to do that part of the job, to be like, all right, yeah, Doug Marone didn't use C.J. Spiller right. Like, what was up with that? Like, maybe let's go go back. And, you know, the, the more you get removed, the more honesty you get from people. And that's, that's kind of a, an interesting dynamic. And you're 100% right because this is the under the hood part of this. You know, and this whole podcast – 
now from here on out is that I used to cover Richard Mendenhall's brother getting signed by the team because we had to have a weekly Bills podcast. We didn't know what to do. I still don't know what to do. I did know that doing too much content is too much and whatever, but the thing is, is doing all of it is I don't even have the access you guys do in real time. And, you know, I'm reading what fans read, and then it's, oh, I have a source here and here. And then that person who has a source of a source on a message board is now the message board hero, and his source could be like, the broom closet guy, or you know what I mean? Like, this is stupid. Right. So, like, um, uh, you know, perspective also changes things, and that whole, you know, you can't see the forest from within the trees. If I said that right, I'm like Tim Allen talking to Mr. Wilson over the fence. I'm yeah. philosophically right, <laughs> but I'm just stupid. Nah, <laughs> it's just like, ah. Uh. So, what I'm saying is, um, you know, the T.O. thing was really interesting. Now, would you, I mean, I didn't expect to go here. Man, this is weird. I had a memory from like a 2010, holy shit, I think it was 2010 camp, if I'm not mistaken. And I go by my haircuts. I had a really short haircut. I actually didn't mind fades back in the day. For a couple of years, I was into it. There's a lot of Burlington Coat Factory going on there. I couldn't yeah. afford, <laughs> couldn't afford clothes. No, but... uh. So, I had this pic. I don't think I took the picture, and I had a picture of Marshawn Lynch, Fred Jackson, and CJ Spiller, just standing there. You know, you don't think anything of it. And this is before I could have access to WGR. I didn't realize that Shop and Bulldog were streamed through um, ninety six five. Now I don't know what you think about the radio guys, so you don't got to give a, an opinion on it. But I'm just going to talk here for a sec. Um, I didn't understand. We were talking pre roll about like I was telling you about my view on fans there's different fan degrees you have your guys the green eyes the bambi legs the coming out they're gonna spit some fire on twitter you're an idiot you're negative dude i used to crush sam marana i used to just shit on him dude and because i'm just like how could you be so impassionate this is sports this is the greatest thing in the world oh my god you know that's me dude like i'm sorry sal if you're hearing this sal i'm really sorry you know you know whatever as in like he's a great guy yeah i love him yeah like and that's what i found out is just like no, dude, you guys don't get it. And, and really, the thing is, it's probably resentment because I used to listen to a show called The Bills Brothers, and you go on with Tulio, Catalana. Sounds awesome, that dude. And then somebody else, right? And they would do a Bills Brothers segment. And he would do something that, like, I get, ah, oh, dude, I'm going to laugh so hard because I just, like, it's so awesome. It's so awesome. It's, like, the best joke in the world, Matt. And he goes, they start talking about Syracuse basketball. No, this is supposed to be the Bills Brothers Hour. I, I I know what this is about. Your first 20 minutes is the main segment, and then you have like two 10 minutes that could be like three six minutes in a commercial. So no, and they're talking about Syracuse basketball. So like when I don't when I'm streaming, okay, my sports shows from my BlackBerry on a scaffold, <laughs> listening to all these commercials, memorizing them chapter by verse. We don't have any podcasts. And Sam Mariana is right there in front of all these dudes and just like, yeah, I don't want to talk about this. Dude, you got to have something you could talk about throughout the year that people might find interesting to look into. You're only on this thing 50 weeks a year for like an hour. I mean, it's a lot, but like you have two other people are going to talk to you, you know, so just bring a breadcrumb. That was all it was, but but he said the truth. And the joke to me is there's nothing going on. It doesn't matter. And, you know, what happened with Marshawn Lynch? I don't want to put you on the spot. Like, what happened with Marshawn Lynch? Allegedly, he stole $20, and allegedly, these radio guys got him boosted out of town. I don't know. You know what I mean? I'm not going to go to bat for, for Shovel Bulldog. I do not know them personally. But the older I get, I understand that they appeal to a fan base, which is, we've seen this movie played for 20 years now, okay? We're not just some bambi like idiots that have been following this sports team for five years, and we're like all knee-deep in it, which is what we come across, which is okay. You can be that. But I also work side-by-side side with this kid who's 21 years old, and he's going to slap a Steelers podcast, and uh, we're going to do this other show called Footballed, which is just going to be pretty much we're just going to donate shit talk to the feed about whatever about football. You know, and there's so much to talk about. Some of you gambling, whatever, but... Why do him and I philosophically agree? And then there's like some 40-year-olds that are like want to fight each other over the dolphins in the parking lot. And I'm just like, what are we doing? Like, Yeah, it is. It's kind of 
interesting to think about how many different types of fans there are. How, you know, especially, I feel like, you know, I keep going back to this time without sports because it, it kind of makes you, you think about a lot of this stuff. And you think about how, you know, how how much people some you know some people really need sports or maybe some people took the the time away from sports and realized hey you know this isn't as important as i thought it was it's a nice distraction uh, but you're right there's you know kind of a wide spectrum of of fans some people are are angry enough to fight the opposing fans in the in the parking lot some people are angrily you know spewing things on twitter others are kind of just there to to have a good time and and i think that ties right into kind of what you're talking about you know about media content and you know different radio hosts and things like that i mean uh you know Chopin the bulldog uh i really enjoy listening to those guys they might not be for every fan um just like my you know you know the podcast i do with joe might not be for everybody or um the way i cover the team might not be for everybody i think if you're trying to be for everybody you're you're going to end up being for nobody uh in a way but there's there's different um you know especially nowadays with so many blogs so many podcasts uh so many different voices and even the credentialed media that run a, a spectrum of of you know viewpoints and perspectives you can kind of you know, find what you're looking for, um, and let sports, uh, let the bills and let your bills content be what you want it to be for you. And that's the good, the good part about it also raises all of our games, right. Is when there's so much competition, even from, you know, credentialed or non-credentialed media, it really doesn't matter these days. Um, you know, whether somebody has a credential or not, it, they can, you know, tell an interesting story or bring a different perspective that, that people find interesting, then that's, you know, competition. So it's, um, you know, sports fandom is, is something that, um, psychologically is, is kind of interesting to think about, um, and to go into the weeds on because there are people, you know, take sports and, and make it what they want to make it. And uh, a lot of people, you know, have different ways of being fans and, and that impacts how they, how they consume it. Yeah. It's very interesting because <clears throat> I'm going to be honest here. Um, I, I bought this, this thing, you know, I, I went in hard as I was telling you pre-roll and, um, as some of you know, I have a situation I've gone public with my wife. So there's a GoFundMe. If you check my Twitter, um, and my personal, it's, it's a quote unquote, man, it's like the fucking worst thing ever, dude. Like, to have, like, her bass player, she's in a band, Fox 45. She's like, yo, you're setting up a GoFundMe. You guys aren't going to, like, you know. Like, my house is pretty much, like, if it wasn't for COVID, you know, we in Crooked Cuomo, it would be a little hard. You know, so finding time to podcast about shit that doesn't matter when I could put on the Buffalo Beat. And, like, you guys literally take out my steam. So what I was saying on the GoFundMe thing is... um. Matt, thank you for coming on because I'm just trying to raise awareness for this thing and I'm not trying to go into it because there's really nothing to go into. It's I'm running a business, okay, and I've had my employee probably cash for a long time and insured, meaning to save that 100 bucks a week actually helps him because I'll pay him more money. It doesn't come out and I have a little construction gig and we do a lot of homeowner work. So the homeowners can pay him directly and keep it legal, right? But if we're building things, and my wife has a weird DACA situation, she's pretty much born in the country without record of how, okay, as a traffic child, and we're building a life together, we have to focus and just grind and grind and grind. Well, at the same time, our house started falling apart. Her trying to hustle, our vehicles fell apart. And at the same time, I started building this studio to build a network and to record my music in house. And now I'm like full and then send it out to get mixed, but have a studio quality, not like crap. So it has to be analog. It has to be whatever. But when you do it right as a business, it's a write off and it's done legit. It pays back. So now I have a music, some music I'm going to write that I'm recording next week in Geneseo somehow. I don't even have a song written, but it's going to be like some metal shit. with like a couple amps. Like I'm going to have my dad play. It was like a, 
70s rock and roll guy. Uh, all those bands over the years, cover bands, like, you know, Grand Funk Railroad, that type of stuff. And um, it, it'll be fun. But it's going to be like he's he likes to have a lot of game in his hands. It's going to be pretty heavy. So we'll have like a little, man, it should be interesting. We should have like a little, uh, probably like a pre-order thing. And then we'll be able to slap that right on a lawyer. So what we're trying to do here is with immigration lawyers, they're very expensive. And we're essentially trying to raise enough awareness here where people go, yo, what is going on here? This late, this girl does not even speak Thai. She's going to Thailand, and we are in the middle of fucking COVID, and the judge didn't seem to do any research or our own lawyer on if she can even get into the country and how, if she's even a citizen. So we have a lot of things where she essentially waived her appeal and has to leave November 23rd. And I'm like just going, like I'm like literally shaking about it because I've been working 21 days straight. Am I broke? Mm, yeah. Did I sell everything I have? Fuck no. We're not there. So I need to make that clear with people. This is this GoFundMe is strictly to dive into this and get this lawyer thing settled because she can't legally work if she's not a fucking citizen now. And this whole DACA thing might not stand even though you renewed it. So it's like a whole bunch of horse shit. It's all in the GoFundMe. I hit up Tim Graham. He was such a sweetheart. Like, dude, I'm going to tweet it. Um, I got more people to hit up. But, um, man, uh, I don't know what the hell we were talking about, dude. But I just went off for some reason because that's just what I do. We were talking about philosophical uh, things. Yeah. And, <laughs> I mean, that, you know, what you, we've been kind of talking about, you know, back and forth about, you know, jumping on a podcast at, at some point and I'm I'm glad that that could be the the impetus for for this and hopefully you know get the word out about what's going on with with your family and it was you know it sucked to to read it and you know hopefully spreading the word can help obviously you know like you said raising funds can can be a huge help but it's an issue that I feel like um, isn't personal for a lot of people it can easily just be a debate topic right immigration or, or whatever um and when you have a personal story to connect it to it it really drives home you know the point uh, for a lot of people and especially you know that's where we talk about you know the sports and and the bills and and you know the philosophical nature of fandom and all this stuff what it can bring some good right if it if it you know, helps if me as a, as a reporter, or, you know, somebody with a, a platform, however small it may be that I have can, you know, help, help get the word out on that and help kind of raise uh, awareness and, and, you know, money that way, then, you know, maybe sports, you know, can be, can be good uh, in that way and, and can help, uh, you know, like people like Tim sharing it out, you know, hopefully, hopefully it's uh, something that can, you know, help you guys and, and help, uh, help make that situation right. Because it's, uh, it was tough to read. Well, Tim or Tim again, Matt, you, thank <laughs> you again, because it's like, what's ironic is my wife, Vicky, her, her, her whole family is Bill's fans and, uh, her friend, Jesse, shout out free plug. I'm going to hold over his head. Jesse, the shout out's worth like a thousand dollars, but, uh, geotherm in Rochester, if you need geothermal work. So he does solar panels, does, you know, heating and cooling but the natural way check him out geotherm best fucking name ever and um he doesn't even know that i have to tell him that no no dude really well why don't you just call your company dry Wah? no i'm not gonna just call it dry Wah. geotherm is great <laughs> <laughs> like but no he's a big bills fan his wife and this and that and the thing is, is my wife is the opposite dude she she's like this is stupid why am i here <laughs> you know <laughs> but, yeah but but she's also the kind of person where she could be like playing drums my drum like we'll be playing she she'll play like i have drum kit set up she'll be on the drums and i'll be like yo my amp sounds like shit can you dial me in some better tone and then she could do that so like i will trade that for a, a bills fan wife any day of the week like i like thank you you know and she's really cool and has opened up my eyes to like what i love again which is like i left playing video games and making art and just making noise and being outside playing football basketball whatever i can get myself into i didn't play much organized sports my parents wouldn't take me like i, I wrestled in high school so that was cool but you know to get out of this box of sports is great but you know through thick and thin uh i heard something on this podcast my friend sam Tripoli has this podcast called zero 
And he had me edit um, one of them for him. And what I had to do is just take out a minute and then I had to bad just intro to this video for him and, and spit it back to him in, in our Dropbox. And this guy, Avi, I forgot his name, such a bad person, but he brought up a point and his mom was a prostitute and all this other shit. And like, he had a hard fucking life. And he goes, you know what we need in this world? Water, food, and community. And when it comes, and I'm not even trying to pander to the, like, let me make something clear to you, Matt. I, I love that you didn't pander there. I, I, I don't think your podcast fucking panders. The Buffalo Beat is hands down the best podcast. Uh, it actually seems like you guys get along. There's no pandering. But let me tell you something. Bill's Mafia, I think a lot of them are, are, are fucking, that there's a big populace. It's a bad representation of them online. But when it comes to this type shit, Bill's Mafia is second to none. Um, as a sports fan base. They have, I believe, next to the Lakers group, the biggest Facebook group ever, our boy Adam Deacon. It's not tied to Del Reed, but Bills for Life, that Facebook group. And my friend Adam Deacon, the old producer here, he's still a moderator on the board, and he tells me the shit that comes through there still and all the hatreds for you, this and that. But at the same time, if you need to get a message out about, like, you know, Pancho Beal is a perfect example. Um, and I'm not looking for that kind of, I'm not looking, like, dude, we, like, Dude, we didn't even want to go public with this. Like, I was just paying the lawyer and Vicky's email and stuff and taking on little odd job, pain jobs. She's got a bunch of pieces of art. She's going to drop an art store. She'll kill me if she knows I said that. Um, she's very private about it. She wants to, like, have everything set up, drop it, you know. But the sports world, um, community-wise, how is it at the, at the athletic in the Buffalo Beat, right? You guys seem to have, and I'm going to derail off what we were just talking about, but it has to do with what we're talking about, to piggyback, is you guys seem to have, like, a good work atmosphere under the hood over there. Like, you and Joe genuinely talk well. You have Tim come on. It's it's genuinely, like, talk and shop, long form, and it's really driven me away from going, like, man, if these guys, like, ever didn't want to work with the Athletic, I wonder if I could, like, find them sponsors and pay them myself and, like, make merch for them and promote them because they do such a good job. I don't even want to talk about the bills anymore because it was fun, but I want to put my energy elsewhere. You know what I mean? Not many, there, there, there's so much media now that the landscape has changed. Where like me making a bunch of YouTube videos, rolling on my roof and like drop kicking a dolphin in a speedo, like in Miami, like I had this idea, you know, so then I go execute it, but does it really do anything? I guess. You know, it helped me get some connections to, to more people to do other stuff. But I thought I was going to be like a Bills podcaster and just like crush the game, love football. But, I mean, I feel like the athletic, you guys actually have a good time over there and don't seem to hate it. Or am I just making this up? No, oh, yeah. It's one of the things I liked about going there was, um, you know, at my, my old job, I was um, – I really liked the people I worked with, but I was the only one out here in Buffalo. Um, you know, the office is in Syracuse and I'd go there a couple of times a year and, um, I always loved going there and, you know, I would talk to my editor on the phone all the time and, you know, connected that way. But it's, but I was on my own on the beat, uh, until Ryan came along, but, um, you kind of, you know, at, now at the athletic having, you know, teammates is kind of cool. Uh, not just even here in Buffalo, but like around the country, uh, with this company, you know, with people covering all sorts of teams. And, um, you know, I didn't really know John Vogel too well before, um, you know, we both came to the athletic and now, you know, we're, we're good friends, Tim and I, and Joe and I were, were friends before. Um, so that's just made it, made it seamless, but the amount of connections you make, with people in other markets, you know, it's, it's creates kind of, you, you feel motivated because there's a lot of people pushing in the same direction towards a common goal, um, you know, all doing different things. And, um, but it's a big, it's a big company that feels small in that way because we're all kind of connected. We all, you know, at the, the scouting combine in Indianapolis, all of our NFL and college football writers, you know, kind of got together and you look around the room and there's, man, it had to have been over a hundred people. Uh, it's like, you know, all these people are, you know, some of the, the best at what they do, but at the same time, we're all kind of, um, we're all just people. Um, and you know, we're all, 
uh, trying to do the best we can. So it's kind of, it, it's fun in that way and motivating in that way that you're, you're not just, you know, doing it for a company or a, a corporate banner. You're do, you're doing it for the, the people around you that are, um, you know, that you care about and that are friends. And it's nice to, to kind of have that. I felt this, I did not expect this. I felt this, this community when I went to camp with the media you know, I'm an outsider. You know, I have long hair. I'm, I'm clearly an outcast. I'm the only one with, like, tattoos and stuff. But this is all in my head. You know what I mean? It's all in my head. You know? It's yeah. not, not that everybody cares. But, like, again, it's like I keep my mouth shut. And, you know, I see Joe in his sandals, his Jesus sandals, his Air Jesus. I, I want to say what up. Big fan. You really are tall as hell. You really could probably run a good <laughs> route. <laughs> like, Randy Moss, who? Like, those arms are long. You know? Like... So, you know, I wanted to shoot the skinny, but it's professional. And it's just like, when I'm on a job site, I'm not just going to go up on a roof. <laughs> Dude, that hammer, man. Let me talk about the right. hammer. <laughs> like, <laughs> But it kind of is that way. In the, it, it eventually the does. Like, you know, like, um, I think, uh, like, you know, technically we're all competitors, I guess, right? Guys at other outlets and stuff like that. But it, it's one of the things I've missed over the last, you know, however many months is like, you know, kind of chopping it up with, with different guys, uh, you know, that you see on the sidelines of practice. Um, and you know, now it's all over zoom and, um, uh, you know, we, some of us get together and, and golf, uh, and whatnot, or, you know, do stuff like that. But that's kind of the fun of it is the, you know, yeah, we're all competing, right. We're all at different outlets, but even the, the community within, uh, the media group here, I mean, you're all kind of, you feel a common struggle, right? You're, you're dealing with the same problems and the same, uh, you know, when you're in the same industry like that, I'm sure it's the same way in, in construction, you know, there's a, a human element to that where you can relate to one another. And, you know, it's, it certainly makes a, a bit of a different bond. First day. And I mentioned his name earlier, Dirk Boyko throwing heat at that, at that media department. I'm not shitting on him. <laughs> I just look at things, how efficient they are. And I, and I could be totally wrong. Cause I'm, you know, but um, first day there, I'm standing in the grass to the side of the chairs, McDee's out there. I'm a wrestler, so I got mad respect for this guy, okay? Mad respect. And, um, I have my Starbucks trying to iced coffee, light cream, two pumps, cinnamon dolce, okay? I got my phone out. I got my notepad under my arm or I'm holding it and I'm holding and I put my coffee by my feet, right? This dude, McDermott, starts talking. My coffee tips over. (laughs) And I got my (laughs) phone out periscoping and then already tweeting. Coffee tips over. This dude picks it up. Tips it up for me. That dude also goes, one more question. So me with my balls, after the press was over, I see him on the sidelines talking to some, somebody. You know, I go in there, Jack. Hey, just want to say thank you um, for picking up my coffee. And uh, my name is David Palermo from, you know, Cover One or I forgot what it was on my press. I'm looking at it now. Cover One, July 29th, August 1st. Cover One or could have been Great Insane Sports Network, which was a new network that I was technically a part of starting up with Eric. And his other guy, Chad Delamonicus, really did a great job doing all that. I was just more of like a rah, 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 pay a little rent for the server. And Derek goes, yeah, I'm in uh, I'm in the book here. <laughs> really? <laughs> and the media guy's yeah. Goes, yeah, right here. <laughs> and I go, yeah, I do drywall shit. And he goes, yeah, just, he goes, really? I, and if you do know him, like, let him know, like, for real, anybody you know, like, I will come out and do, like, drywall repairs, like, cheap, because I have my business where I schedule my own homeowner work first now before contractors. It's called having control of your own life. It's it's a new concept um, yeah. to me. <laughs> but I, I I thought I sent him an email about it, but it's fit back. I, I might have typed in it wrong, but I don't think I remembered sending him the email right away about some repairs. But he's, like, the nicest dude ever. And, and then, you know, my little journey through training camp you know the media says oh yeah we're gonna take care of these players i go into like the cafeteria there's all these sugary ass fountain drinks meanwhile i did like that lorenzo whole 30 diet i want to have 
Lorenzo Alexander on, not even to talk about the Bills, just to talk about the whole 30 diet the or program. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but yeah. Dude, I've done it a few times, and um, first time, 28 days, second time, 10 days, I, I was tempted. And the next yeah. time, I just <laughs> went on for like 40-something days, and um, it changed everything. What I'm trying to tell you is, you know, in there, you see the cafeteria, everybody talking, hamming up. I pay attention to who's who. But then you, it, what was great is just to be there and remember how human everybody is, because you see, I'm not going to name names, all these extreme pros and then they're just talking like i would and i'm like i love you guys because what we have here is we have a bunch of sheep making media and i mean this with respect to the diy media we have a bunch of sheep making media and they're really worried about what people are going to think and really what they need to worry about is getting their thought out there and having a good time because that's what matters I saw this comment with Joe Rogan years ago, not to be cocky on it. That's how this podcast started. I saw this comment. Now everybody's trying to be that. Everybody's trying to be this. Oh, my God, open dialogue. It's like, oh, my God, they create a system that is meant for clickbait. The system we see is not even meant to read the article. The system we see nuts and bolts under the hood, as you know, Matt, is to drive reaction because that creates dollars. And I'm having arguments with friends of mine that, trust me, with money they trust me with their life they trust me to drive them home while they're fucking drunk out of their mind they trust me with all the shit and we're getting in arguments every week just yelling and then we go love you man love you too dude and it's really over discernment of the fucking media and getting down to the source and i have to remember that even as a guy who may not be practicing cypress hill in and out of the podcast or you know it does it like I'm just a dude, dude, okay, like, I'm just a dude, but I know how to critically think, and I learned how the media works, and when somebody, like, say, no shade on him, if you know him, but a Jason LaConfora, for example, throw something out there, I know, and I will say this, that he is not that accurate, but there could also be a whimper to that, that we can't just blanket statement him, it still needs to be researched, does that make sense? I feel like there's a hard discernment amongst fans. And um, do I have you too long? Can I ask you my one Josh Allen question? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Okay. So my, a lot of my friends are with me on this. We did a live draft show. And let me let me give you my draft preview for the two shows, the two drafts before with Watkins and EJ Manuel Pryor. And I was watching my friend Mike Smith, who uh, he's been on the podcast. He's on the last one. And – we eventually set up a live draft show. I was with him when they drafted EJ Manuel. I put my hand up in the air and I dropped. I go, what the fuck? Next year, Watkins, who the fuck is passing him the ball? Right. And I'm like, I can't understand how Whaley is so good at rounds two through. He gets no credit for Ronald Darby being a first-round fucking pick. Being a first-round Fucking top five, I thought, DB. Like, in the league, as a rookie. He, he, he was up there in some PFF ratings. Like, like maybe I'm talking about him in my ass, okay? Maybe you're screaming. I don't know. But, like, that was a was great a player. Uh -huh. So, finally, the team has all this equity before Brandon Bean and Mc, before McDermott and then Brandon Bean get here. Okay, we talked earlier. I bought into the fucking Rex Ryan clown show because it's fun, man. It's fun to have fun. And as you said on The Athletic, which they need to check out, um, or I mean on the Buffalo Beat, you guys talked to how it was actually better to cover Doug Mar Marone because he'd pull you to the side. The whole conversation about you guys are eating wings. And then he's like, well, there goes Stevie Johnson. <laughs> Just like, right. like, like what yeah, the that fuck? Was Rodak, yeah, that was Rodak, uh, Rodak when we had Rodak on. Great like, yeah, guy, yeah. Rodak, dude. Oh, yeah, he's the best. I was uh, texting with him last night. <laughs> we did. Does he know we made a skit of him or no? I don't know. Uh, oh he was he was pretty good at tuning out the noise. Can I send yeah. it to you and and have you look at it with humor? Because you know how it has to do with everybody thinks he's a Patriots fan. So we set up a blow up doll that looks like Tom Brady. I bought an S ten and I spray painted it cold front because his Rex Ryan's defense was supposed to be real. And then my friend Adam Deacon dressed up, you know, with that fucking head tattoo, <laughs> like it's Mike Rodak. <laughs> and then. 
he's like, oh, we got nothing to see here. And he like kicks the Tom Brady guy and he goes, what's this? And it's just like a, it's like an air pump. But after I heard that podcast, I was like, oh no, I feel like such a, you know, because I don't mean that person. It's just, it's just satire. But it's like all of Bill's mind is like, fuck Rodak. He's so negative. He's I'm like, no, maybe he's probably right. <laughs> like, Right. Well, that's the thing is like he got really good at at just ignoring it, um, which I give him a lot of credit for because he he got a lot of grief uh, on Twitter and, and stuff like that. But that's what you see. It's kind of like what we talked about. Different fans want different things out of the media. And really, you know, it's not our job to be fans um it's our job to kind of think critically and and kind of you know provide the truth um in whatever way we can and you know rodak was just calling it how he he saw it and if you look at the he covered the team from 2013 to 2017 and if you read some of his or did he was here for 2018 too um but if you if you um read some of his stuff from 2017 and 2018 you'll see he was pretty positive as the team was getting things turned around and kind of, you know, building towards something. But, you know, you look at those years, five out of those six years or whatever, they didn't make the playoffs. Um, you know, and the, the one year they did, they kind of backed in. So, like, it's not like he had a, a juggernaut to cover. Um, no, but I, you no. Know, I do understand some people get defensive of, of their teams and um, don't want that. Necess- don't want to be reminded about how, how lousy they are when they're lousy. But, uh you know, he kind of he did a good job of, of blocking it out. And, yeah, he's a uh, – I think the more people get to know him, uh, the more of his personality he showed. The, there's There was a segment of Bills fans that certainly appreciated him. And, and, and I'm one of them. And what's funny is I'm, I'm looking at a line – and, I, and and an imaginary bar in my head, I'm, it's like, man, if Mike Rodak is positive about the Bills and, and I'm fucking – my head is up my ass about the Bills, there's a problem because – he was the most hated dude. And I'm like, I, and as a human, how we talk, like I, this might be a comedy thing, but before I make any decision, I'm not out here trying to crush Salmi around. It was just a philosophical point. I'm not out here trying to crush Rodak. It's just satire. It's the whole Bill's mafia is making fun of him. And he's a Pats fan. Like we could play into it, but have some satire about it. Like he's a Pats fan. But what that means is as a Pats fan, if he really is or not, I don't care if he is. It, it, it doesn't matter. He's a reporter. He has a job to do. He has to survive. And so, and, and hating on that is stupid. And, and that's that people cross a line. Um, and, and it's 24 seven customer service with players now with athletes, coaches. If, well, they're not on Twitter. They're smart. Um, and, and we're just, told to accept it because they have money and they have fame and they have prestige it's like no dude these people go through shit they are all human when you go watch these bands and they're touring like testament or these huge ass bands like slayer they have their family with them you know and 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 just i've always wanted to give you writers and just pass the word out dude anybody i don't care if it's a player from eight years ago somebody who wants to come on and promote the breadcrumb they stepped on on their way into their house like i just love talking to anything like anybody, really, about inter- something interesting stuff. And Rodak, it was such a great time to listen to him talk. And I thought I heard him on a couple times. And he's like really like a cool dude. And the thing is, is you have to remember people. You're talking about a team. And when you watch the rest of the league and actually are open to watching the rest of the league, you realize how fucked up the Bills are. And I really mean that. It's not like Shope would say. Like I am pretty much philosophically, Matt, for you and me to understand this conversation, in lockstep with Shope, with Mike Shope. I don't have to get you up to speed. I don't have to, like, I have wanted to get him on, but I don't have the balls to ask him. I slipped in his DMs on IG. Um, but, you know, I don't want to ask him that way to come on. I thought I sent him an, was going to send him an email. Don't have it. But, like, philosophically... I thought they treated Tyrod Taylor like crap. I thought when you're talking about a game that's based off of chess, it's the most, it's the best chess you can have because you're asking 11 people to do something right against 11 other people who are trying to do something right. It's not going to happen. You're going to have chaos. This is amazing. And this is going to lead to my Josh Allen. Okay. Now, when it comes to covering the team, you're covering a team in the page, or you're, you're a fan of other teams around the league. And it's not that hard for one, it looks like. Number two, the Patriots themselves, 
people are stupid because you're talking about McDonald's versus your friends who might have like a couple restaurants that are about to go out of business every other year and their wheels are literally falling off and they're getting flat tires and the Patriots back to what we were talking about earlier under the hood. Yes. It's a system in football. Yes. There's football systems like plays have, you know, they're tied to system, but the system of the system, like the grandmaster, you know, get all weird Freemason or whatever talks, the big plan. Okay. Whatever you want to put there, the big plan of the Patriots Their system is just incredible. Bill Belichick is incredible. Now, is there some cheating there? Is there some paying off the rest? I don't know because I'm not there. Is there whispers? I don't know. But there's some stuff coming out about, you know, that Washington team where I don't even talk about that. I'm going to call them the foreskins. I don't even mess around with that. And the Bills are not a well machine. So when McDermott comes in, and we have the most stacked roster I have ever seen of the Buffalo Bills that Whaley built. I'm sorry. There was so much talent on that team as a Bills fan that I have seen since really giving a shit for since T.O., a couple years before T.O., like really paying attention, paying attention. Dude, there was never a team better, man. And then they had so much equity going into that Josh Allen draft. And then... They put him behind Peterman his rookie year, and Peterman was an abomination. And and, and when you hear whispers from Joey Bosa saying, like, the offensive line just didn't block, that tells me there's a lot more going on. And then and I talked about this on the podcast. I go, I was in a John Murphy show, and Incognito has to go on there and tell them, yo, we had to tell Juan Castillo that we did this before, top in the league two years in a row, and we're go- after game five, we went in there and, we, you know, we got to put our, you know, he PR'd it up. He did the right thing. He said it right. But, but like, dude, they had the pieces and then they just trade, trade, trade. Now, I don't know what happened with Marcel there is behind the scenes. I understand you got to have a good culture. But this team backed into the playoffs through Andy fucking Dalton. And I could not believe how hard. Until I saw the media with the election and, and since Trump was elected, okay, I can't believe how, how fucking stupid the media is as far as everything and, and how much that the Bills ran with. They made the playoffs. We broke the hump. This is the greatest coach ever. And that fans bought in. And I'm like, you have set up Josh Allen for disaster. We have a limited shelf life here, and you have set him up for fucking failure. For failure. You don't even have a real vet for him to sit behind. A real vet. Somebody who has thrown more than 800 fucking yards in the NFL. You don't even have that. Excuse my French, but clearly I've been pissed about it. And, and, and maybe I went to a few games on mushrooms, too. And then I was like, holy shit. I'm supporting the military industrial complex. How about that with Josh Allen to get crazy on you? <laughs> Matt and that. <laughs> to be funny about it. Like, it just really, like, I was like, I, I, I need to do something with my life. Does that make sense? Because you just see this kid failing. You see him patting yeah. guys on the butt when he joins. You're talking about a lead. It's like, oh, it's leadership time. He met his teammates four fucking times, and we're talking about leadership. Like, I can't fucking take it, dude. I can't fucking take it. That's why I wish I could just do a podcast with fucking Mike Shope. Let him know. We'll just talk fucking nuts and bolts, dude. Just nuts and bolts, you know? Or, or And that's why I love Actually, I take that back. They already do that. But the thing is with the radio is you have to keep hitting talking points. I have to waste my time. I don't want to do that. You know what I mean? Like, just, it, it, this is chess. Here are my freaking players. Here's my system. And don't be an asshole to each other and have a system of accountability. And and the thing I like about McDermott, why I always do believe in him, even though I bash on him, and the reason I bash on him is don't come out, Pagula, bash him about some stupid notepad. Tell me what's in the notepad for every situation because clearly developing a quarterback and a bunch of other shit was not there. Having a guy like Watkins to take the fucking safety with him every play, whether you throw it to him or not, that like that that's not a good chess player to me. And and, and I'm and I'm sorry. It's not. And and after all the fucking resources they've sunk into defense, I hope their defense is, is, is top flight. But they literally gave away six starting players essentially to move up to get Josh Allen and to get Josh Allen. 
And I'm not saying he's bad. I'm not saying I don't stand by him. But you better have the quarter. You, if you're going to take Josh Allen, you better have the pedal to the metal in development. And they were not. And I'm going to spit it to you. So, yeah, it's uh, you know, the thing is, it might. We'll see how it works out. I guess right because, uh, you know, like it's interesting to to think about the missteps they've made, some of which they've admitted to publicly, right. In developing Josh Allen and the, the Nathan Peterman decision. Yeah, but which, they didn't know. I don't want to call you off, but they should have known better, dude. Like when they, when they, oh, when absolutely. they, when they own it, I'm just like, guys, don't be so fucking stupid. Don't right. be, I'm yeah, paying, like, I'm broke as hell. Still trying to go to these games to cover this team and do all this crap. And, and there's a lot of fans that are getting up to meet up with their family, and you're just going to tell them. That's that's when I'm just like, come on, don't tell me Marcel Darius, and then you you, you back out the Brinks truck for Star Tule. I'm sorry, right. a one yeah, dimensional. There's, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of um, these, and, and I think that's important to look at everything the team does through that lens. Not necessarily of uh, look if you you can point out that that Sean McDermott messed up uh, in the early stages of developing Josh Allen while still recognizing that he's done on the whole a decent job as the, as the head coach, right? You can recognize that they, you know, maybe sunk too many resources or didn't have a, a good plan for Josh Allen's rookie year while also keeping an open mind of saying, Hey, maybe he'll work out. Um, the problem comes where it seems like it's such a polarizing thing. It's it's one or the other, right? You can't if you if you're criticizing McDermott, then you're you know you're the enemy. You're you're against the Bills. Where it's like no, it's just looking at um, not looking at things as so black and white. Not looking at things as as so binary as one or the other. It's being like, okay, he screwed up X, Y, and Z. He's done a good job of this. Maybe he'll learn and figure out, you know, what he did wrong. Maybe Josh Allen will still work out, even though they didn't put him in the best situation to succeed early on. Now they've built a roster where you say, wow, this roster is really good. Hopefully the quarterback's good, right? Because oh, yeah. if it's not, then uh, what was all that work for? So, um, yeah, it's interesting to, to think about it through that, that way where you're like, you know, they, they clearly have made some mistakes, um, but a lot of people don't want to see that. They want to they, they want to compare it to 20 years of no playoffs and say, well, hey, these guys are, are the saviors. But um, I think they'd be the first to, to tell you that they, they've made some mistakes. They've made some some missteps in judgment, which a lot of teams do. Um, you know, even Bill Belichick's not perfect, um, but it's about it's about how they it's like to your point. It's about more than just going up there and saying, oh, we messed this up or we did this or we did that. It's about actually believing that you messed it up and figuring out how to be better the next time around and how to, you know, take that decision and, and learn from it, um, which, you know, hopefully is uh, is what they're doing here. And, you know, we'll, we're probably going to get some answers uh, to, to the big picture questions about how they've built this team and um, how they've developed this quarterback pretty soon because it's starting to become uh, – as Richie Incognito would say, it's it's not cutting time. Yeah, it is. And you know, I, I gotta I gotta retract a little bit um to what you were saying because for me it could be the pressure of Pagula came out and talked about notepads. All we heard about were fucking notebooks. Show for it down to two. All we heard about fucking notepads. Well, in those notepads should be systems. In those notepads should be I'm gonna have these guys watch the tape. And see how these players were used. And we're going to find that guy. We're not just going to hire a Juan Castillo because I know him through the Eagles. And we're going to slap down this system. I need to see what the evaluation is for the players on the roster. And I'm sorry. Incognito confirmed that. And so what you have is you have an abomination. You have that they ignored. I'm sorry, Matt. They ignored the offensive line. They ignored it. And then he played money ball last year okay and what i'm trying to tell you is we don't have to go over passing upon pat mahomes i think that's stupid but at the same time i didn't think they'd take josh allen if they didn't like pat mahomes okay now would pat mahomes have been pat mahomes no same shit same exact situation right you have to have 
the dude's there, right? But again, as Shope says, these guys are assets. Or everybody says these guys are assets. You trade up, you get Zay Jones. They tried. They did try to do some creative, clever things, which I do like. Okay. But I think um, this is where I would like to get hired by a team, the Bills. What's the message you're going to send? And I know you have paid, quote, quote, professionals to send this, but like there is still a heart. And I know Russ Brandon is not there, and I don't know anything about Russ Brandon. You would know more than me, but at least from an outsider, I feel like he was really in touch of like, yeah, yeah, we're not going to do that. That's fucking cheap. You know what I mean? There was like a little bit of a filter, I think, with him, or I could be totally wrong, where like it wasn't so gross on some of um, the pushing of stuff. So, for example, what I'm, my main point is this notepad. And that notepad should be systems. Upon systems. And you're a billionaire, Terry. Don't talk about this shit if he doesn't really have systems upon systems upon systems. Like that there's there's that's that's the thing, is I don't like that notepad thing. And and I honestly think I took that a little too serious. Like, oh this motherfucker has a notepad. Oh great. What's in this? This is what you're marketing with now? This is what you're gonna get me to sign up my seat. Oh, he just has to figure it out. Yeah, because I looked at Carolina like a fucking dynasty. This looks like a Bill's too late move. And you already have a quarterback here in Tyrod that you can win games with, okay? And the reason I believe in Rex is because they they did well with Mike Patton in the same system or similar prior. So I thought he could repeat that. I thought Tyrod was a good chess piece. And I thought that, that, that dude, come on, man, Percy Harvin, I have a Harvin jersey. You know, it's weird. <laughs> you know, like I, I don't. They, they had a, I went down to Florida that year with Charles Clay, Harvin, that game in Miami, and it was, like, amazing, you know? But Mario Williams, I actually backed Rex Ryan because I saw defensive ends dropping into coverage, and when you come from a lineage of defense, I bought the marketing on Rex Ryan, dude. I bought the – he's got three years. He's got the pedigree. But come to find out, behind the scenes, it's just a fucking shit show probably, which I don't know you can attest to. So now fast forward to McDermott. I'm almost wondering, like, is this really a thing where this quarterback is going to get developed great or not? I mean, you should know better. I just felt that they could have did a better job. Um, and I don't think that they really – I feel like the what the, the ownership and media department did for the Bills to, to, to a lot of fans is – they rubbed us the wrong way by saying this guy is a notepad and answers for everything when he didn't come from much. As far as like, yes, he's a good defensive guy. He's organized in this and that. And I back him because he is organized and at notepad as much as I'm ripping on it. And number one, he was a wrestler at the highest of levels that people don't understand. If they understand the level that Sean McDermott got to at wrestling, they will understand that he has a wherewithal to turn this team around. And... I think what you're saying is exactly it. You have a solid defense, and yes, the fact that they can own up to it, and you see these guys on a personal level, which I don't, which is why I wanted to have you on, on that human level, whereas it does take a lot for them to own it, and I am glad that they're owning it. It's just some of the pandering just honestly turned me off about it. You know, when Brandon Bean's like, oh, I know, you know, he's a Buffalo guy. Dude, you've been here for eight months, man. I've been going to Buffalo since I was 16 for, for music. And like, I don't consider myself known Buffalo, you know? So it's kind of like, I'm just caught in this pandering marketing chess piece. Are we doing the best with the resources? And really my empathy is really for Josh Allen as a human being and for the coaching staff as in like, guys, support him better. I want him to be here. And that's what I really mean, Matt is like, it's not, I hate the team. It's I want them to sustain. Yeah, for sure. That's and that's I think what goes back to what I was talking about. You know, you you poke holes in, in things because you want you want it to last. You want you want to make sure that um, this this fan base has been fooled by enough head coach general manager combos to to have their guard up and rightfully so. Uh, and I think that's where you know the hope is it, McDermott and Bean at the very least are a lot more competent than a lot of people that came before them, but raise the bar, right? Uh, Don't, don't, you know, lower the bar to what the standard was before, Um, you know, raise it to what it should be league wide. And it's okay to say, Hey, they're doing good at this and not great at this, or they could be better at this. Um, That's how, like you said, 
that's what what it's about with sustaining things. And I, I think I think they're they're in a spot where they're going to sustain. The question is how high can how high can they go? How you know how how good can they get? And some of that will depend on on the guy under center uh, and the the support system they have in place to to develop him into what they hope he can be. And um, at this point, I just hope we get a a season to find out. Right? <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. where there's there's games that that can give us some of these answers for sure. Because these players think, and I thought too that like, hey, your ass needs to be in a playbook every single day. You don't care, Josh Allen. You'd be throwing a thousand balls a day. What are you doing? You, you know, you're not allowed to be human. You make all this money. Your whole life needs to be on this, this, this. And then fans, they think that systems are going to change. They think that all of a sudden accuracy is going to go up 5% all because of the season ended and you guys talked about it for nine months or however long, you know, or six months. And, and it's like that's the biggest disconnect. Um, and like you said, dude, who knows if we'll even have games. Um, do you have any final thoughts, any little teasers for your articles? I can't believe I'm looking at this. It says an hour and eight. Um, but <laughs> that's, that's what happens, right? When you get, no, get I literally <laughs> just wasted your morning from technical difficulties, but, um, you didn't really have to do this, man. Like I really, 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 truly appreciate it. It's been great to get to know you today. Um, and like I said, guys, the, the, the athletic is, I'm not a reader, but I'm a reader with the athletic. And I, and I really mean that, um, the Buffalo beat, I, you know, I'm a big supporter of Cover One, big supporter of Rock Power Report. Those guys make me laugh, but I don't really listen to Bill's podcast anymore, I'm going to be honest. I don't listen to Lockdown Bills anymore. Um, Joe's a good dude, he seems. I'd love to have him on. Um, but I, I just I, I, I can't. Um, so my one-stop shop, really, honestly, has been the Buffalo Beat. So um, is there any little things that maybe we should look forward to for you or articles or... Yeah, I just uh, I just published that Marshawn Lynch thing, which as uh, as I was recording this with you, tweeted it out, and can already um, can already see I'm going to have some uh, some Twitter reaction to to get caught up on there. Some I, I, you know I, uh, some people chatting about it. So uh, that that was uh, the latest thing I wrote, which which I enjoyed doing. Um, so if people want to check that out, we talked about To and Carlos Williams. Those are kind of the types of stories that are that I, I like to steer people to um, if they haven't read my work, because that's the type of stuff I like to do. And, uh, you know, type of type of stories I like to tell and, and what I hope, you know, people uh, come to me for uh, and, and know me for. So I appreciate you having me on and give me a chance to, to chat about some of these things. It was, it was fun, uh, fun talking to you. And hopefully, uh, hopefully this helps uh, get the word out about, about your situation and everything going on. And I'm, I'll be thinking about you guys. Dude, thank you, man. It's really just me getting my ass in gear and just systemizing work, systemizing, you know, because this whole thing came in the middle of a building our lives. We didn't expect to have so many things falling apart, you know. So um, in some weird way, COVID's put a halt, as I was telling you, and where I can repair the house, repair the cars, you know, still slowly test recording things to, you know, fix gear, sell a bunch of music stuff. And, and we're doing, our, we're, you know, we're eating. There's so many people in a worse position. And, but, I mean, this is pretty, pretty dire. You know what I mean? Um, especially with the COVID thing going on. But um, before, people are going to want to know real quick. What's Carlos Williams up to? Um, I went to a little kickball charity tournament with him and James Wilder Jr. He happened to be there during, uh, I think, a second season where I don't think he came back. But, um, see, he was a little, he was honestly a little thick. When he was over at that kickball game, yeah, he's trying to make a comeback in the CFL, and this was a story I wrote a couple months ago. He had some some choice words uh, for for Doug Whaley and how everything went down in Buffalo. He's trying to make a comeback in a, in the CFL, but if there's not a CFL season, he might have he might have some trouble. They're not letting people over the border um, in, into Canada, so I'm curious how that's all going to play out if the CFL doesn't play. But um, yeah, he's trying. He's trying, but I don't know. Uh, I don't know that the interview he did with me helped his cause. <laughs> didn't didn't exactly make him come across sympathetic, but uh, I enjoyed it. I thought he was super honest. Uh, I was shocked at how honest he was. I, I got some quotes that I don't think I'll uh, that I'll ever get again. Um, but you know. dude, you're you're like again, man. You're you're in the pocket, as you would say, right? You're you're covering what you want to like, dude. 
this is like the dream of sports covering, man. Like this is this is great. Like this is really this is fun. So um, it's great to hear it from you, you know, because I'm just a fan. And, and there's so many times I'm just like, take it on my phone. I'm going to tweet them. And I'm like, literally under like drywall still. It's like sanding. And I'm like yes. taking on my phone, dusty with a dust mask on. And I'm just like, I could be on a scaffold like I do anything, you know. Or I, sometimes I might be driving. Um, but, um, well, Matt, thank you again. Uh, I'm just going to keep you here. Let me just exit here. Where can we find you? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Matthew Fairburn, F-A-I-R-B-U-R-N. And if you go to theathletic.com, uh, you can go to theathletic.com slash the Buffalo Beat and actually get 40% off. Um, so that's where you can find my my written work. And you can find me on Twitter at Matthew Fairburn. And our podcast is the Buffalo Beat uh, on whatever podcast platform you you choose to listen to your shows on. Well, as always, people, check out numbillsfan.com for uh, a website that today will maybe be updated this afternoon because I have to go to work. I won't upload this, man, probably till later. Um, but, again, check out my Twitter, GoFundMe. My wife's beautiful. I love her. She's an amazing person. She made me realize there's more to life than a Buffalo Bills. And uh, <laughs> Which is good. <laughs> oh, my God. What am I doing in my life? <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. Find me everywhere at Non Bills Fan. And if you want to get into other things, do not forget, as I talked in the intro, this is brought to you by, that I didn't record yet, by EQ Network. Okay. We're going to have a new podcast coming up called Burnt Coffee Questioning Systems, just like you talked here, but for the real world. How do we discern media? Is propaganda legal? Yes, it is. Incorporation is fun, whatever. Yes, it is. How do you feel about the Anunnaki? I don't know. Um, the Steelers. My boy has one coming up. We have a drywall podcast coming up called Mud Slap. We have Job Tales, which is just like people talking shit about the job, stories, whatever. And um, we'll have a new podcast called Football, which will be a football feed. So don't forget, all football. I got Mike Smith lined up. I got my friend Ryan Jones, who's got the Steelers podcast lined up. I'm going to have my father do some gambling talk. He don't know it, but he's hired because I grew up, Matt, coming up with the spread, which is every Saturday morning, what's the spread? What are we gambling on? Sunday morning, what's the spread? And then throughout the week, what are we gambling on? So, you know, starting a podcast network here, EQ Media, um, in the works. Uh, Kim is on it. I don't know if you ever met Kim from Batavia Downs, social media girl. She's really nice. Does hard work. But I don't think she works there anymore, Matt. So, as always, follow Matt everywhere, and thank you again. I'm your host, David Palermo, and this has been Podcast 241. Goodbye.